All right, let's do some quiz practice here. We have a recent, uh, I think that's supposed to say recent study, claims that the mean time spent studying by all students at a university is not more than 10 hours per week. A random sample of 100 students taken from this university show that they spent an average of 11 hours studying the previous week with a standard deviation of two hours. Test at the 2.5% significance level whether the study's claim is true. So let's look at what we are given here first. When I look at this problem, the first thing that stands out to me is that we are given something inside of a sample. So we have a random sample of 100 students shows an average and a standard deviation. So the standard deviation is given inside the sample. Because of that, okay, so you have, I'll highlight it, Okay, you have your sample inside the same sentence, you are given the standard deviation. So because of that, I need to use my T distribution. Okay, so that's the first thing that I'm gonna see here, so that I am using T. Okay, so our um, test is to test whether the claim is true. So let's see what the claim is. That's gonna be your null hypothesis here. So your null hypothesis is that the mean time spent studying is not more than 10 hours per week, which means that's saying that the mean is less than or equal to 10 hours per week, which means the alternative is exactly the opposite. So the alternative hypothesis is that the mean is greater than 10 hours per week. Okay, because our alternative hypothesis says that the mean is greater, this is going to be a right-tailed test. Okay, because it's facing the right. Okay, so the type of test will be given to us based off of the alternative hypothesis. So we know that, we know we're using T. So let's just gather what we have. We have a sample size of 100. Let's see, we have inside that sample, we've got an X bar. So our mean of our sample is 11. And we have a standard deviation inside that X bar of two hours. We want a significance level of 2.5%. So 0 0.025 is gonna be our alpha there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's get our critical value that we need here. So we need a T table for our critical value. Typically what I am going to do, I'm gonna pull this over into the screen here, is I'm gonna type into Google T table calculator. And then that's just the first one on here. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and put the information that I need in here. So degrees of freedom is gonna be N minus one, so 99 for my degrees of freedom. Significance level of 0 0.025. So that's gonna give me a T value. It's gonna be one tailed here, 1.9842. Okay, so that is my T, so T is 1.9842. I am a visual learner. I really like to visualize these things. So I am going to, when I do these problems, put a normal curve up. Okay, and then I'm gonna put that on the normal curve. <laughs> so let's see here. That T value 1.9842 is gonna be maybe about right here. Actually, it's probably a lot closer to two, wouldn't it be? The nine there. Hold on here. Let me make that look a little better for you. Okay, so it's going to be about right here, which means with this being a right tailed test, this is my rejection region. I like to make my rejection region red. Okay, so if when I do my critical value and I calculate it, if it falls in this region of red here, that means that I'm going to reject. So this is my rejection region. Okay, let me go through and do this test. So now I want to do my um, <clears throat> my critical value, okay? So what I need is I need to calculate the Z or the T score that I'm using here. So we're actually doing a T, but we're doing the same calculation as Z. So what we're doing is X bar minus the mean over the standard deviation of my sample, okay? So we haven't actually found this part yet, so we want to go ahead and do that. So the standard deviation of X bar 
is the standard deviation given within the context of the problem over the square root of the sample size. Now let me give you the formula for that. So that's standard deviation of x bar is s, little s, over square root of n. Okay, so 2 over the square root of 100 is going to be 2 over 10, which should give you 0.2. So 2 over the square root of 100 gives us 0.2. Okay, so that is going to be my standard deviation of x bar. So let's go ahead and plug those in. So you have x bar is 11. Our mean is 10 given to us in the problem over 0.2. So 1, 11 minus 10 is 1. And then we will divide that by 0.2. So we get 5. That's a really big value for Z or T. Okay, and if I put this on here, that's like way... I take this extending it that's like over here so here's five so that's in the rejection region okay so if this is in the rejection region we would say we're going to reject the null if we want to put that up as <clears throat> a critical value we say five is greater than our t value 1.9842 which means we will reject the null meaning that the study's claim is not true, that students at a university, okay, the mean time spent studying at a university is not more than 100, or sorry, 10 hours per week. Okay, that's not true. It is more than 10 hours per week, or we have reason to believe that it can be. We're not proving the alternative, we're just saying that we can reject the null. Now, you might also want to do this with the p-value approach. Okay, the p-value approach is you're just getting um, your p, here, so for your p-value approach, okay, you need to find the p-value for this t here, this 5. So uh, when you're doing that, you're actually going to use with a t, t-cdf. So it goes t-cdf, and then it's going to be your lower limit, your upper limit, and your degrees of freedom. Okay, so... If I go on here, I go second bars, and then number five here, TCDF, my lower limit is going to be five. My upper limit is 99. Okay, the reason I'm using an upper limit of 99 is because we're on the right side of the mean. Okay, when we're on the right side, sorry, of zero. So when you're on the right side of your normal curve, you're going to use a positive 99. When you're on the left side, you're going to use a negative 99 and make that your lower limit. And then our degrees of freedom is, our sample size is 100, so degrees of freedom is 100 minus 1, 99. Okay, and then that is going to give us 1.2, so this is um, in scientific notation here. So that means I've got six decimal places I'm moving to the left, so it's five zeros and then a one. So the T of P, or the P of T, P of T is one, two, three, four, five, one. Okay, if I compare that to the alpha, so my alpha, my significance level is 0 0.025. That is less. Okay, so when your P is less than your alpha, you will reject. If P is greater than alpha, you fail to reject. So this is a reject, the null hypothesis using the p-value approach.